The Body in the Wetlands, A Jazzy Xander's Mystery, Book Two, by Judy Lynn, narrated by Devon Sorbury. Chapter One Sweat dripped in Jazzy's eyes. It stung. She swiped the rest off her forehead. When you roofed a house in Indiana in late August, being closer to the sun only made you cook faster. She glanced at Ansel and Jared, her boyfriend and cousin, their t-shirts drenched and stuck to their skin, just like hers. Muscles rippled as Ansel spread another layer of shingles over the last row and hit them with his nail gun. Tat, tat, tat. The guns beat out steady rhythms. Usually, the sight of her beautiful blonde Norseman in a tight t-shirt set her hormones a twitter, but not today. He looked just as salty as she felt. She was keeping up with the guys, the three of them roofing as fast as they could, while Thane, who'd bought this long, sprawling ranch-style house with Jazzy's sister Olivia, had the unfun job of carrying shingles up the ladder to them. It was his house, after all, and they were doing him the favor. The shingles were so hot, they wore gloves to protect their hands. Jazzy, Jared, and Ansel had promised to help with renovations between their regular fixer-upper projects. They'd just finished the Victorian on Lake Avenue and sold it before they put a sign in the front yard. They could stall on starting the big old house they'd bought off Anthony Boulevard. Since Thane's biggest worry had been the ranch's roof, they'd packed their gear on Thursday and shown up here early Friday morning. The temperatures had been in the 70s when they'd made their promise. Now, the heat had climbed into the high 80s, and it was only 10 in the morning. They'd started work on the double garage at 7. It took more time than planned because they had to strip three layers of old shingles and replace most of the plywood beneath them. It was finished now, but the house was so long and angled that they'd be lucky if they got half of its roof done today. Jazzy smiled when she heard kids' voices, yelling and laughing, on a recess break. A private school bordered the end of Olivia's subdivision. Jazzy loved the sound of kids playing. How teachers could keep their attention on hot August days was beyond her. She finished her row of shingles, and Thane dropped another stack for her to start on. They kept roofing for another hour before Thane called, "'It's too darn hot!' We need a couple of beers to cool off. Finally, a break. They started down the ladder to go inside, the guys first, Jazzy last. When she reached the bottom and turned around, Jared and Thane were already on their way into the cool air conditioning, but Ansel was standing there waiting for her. Was I that slow? she asked. You can take all the time you want. I was just enjoying the view. Her tall Norseman was nothing to snicker at either. She'd noticed women coming outside to pick a weed here and there just to gape at him. She didn't blame them. Hooking her arm in his, she headed inside for a beer. The smell of fresh paint smacked her. Voices came from the back rooms. Jazzy's mom and sister were painting the four bedrooms, the only rooms in the entire place that didn't need serious updates. But that's why Olivia and Thane had gotten the property for such a good price. It needed TLC. They huddled around the kitchen island, a sturdy wooden work table. Ansel's pug, George, who went everywhere with him, raised his head off the kitchen tile to look at them. The dog might pout if he was left at home, but he wasn't devoted enough to lie outside in the shade while they worked. Ansel ran a critical gaze over the open floor plan for the kitchen, dining area, and living room, all carpeted. He shook his head. Who carpets a kitchen? After the roof, that was their next project, to rip up all the worn, plush green pile and matching indoor-outdoor kitchen carpet and install wood floors. Jared grimaced at the worn spots and stains. I'd do the whole house and get it over with, That way, all the wood would match. Thane reached for his second beer. If I were swimming in greenbacks, I'd agree with you, but the bedroom carpets aren't as bad as these. We want to save money and do them later. Jazzy had been lucky when she remodeled her house. 
When she and Jared had bid on the stone cottage in the summer, they got it at a bargain price. They'd meant to sell it as a fixer-upper until she fell in love with the place. Its value was so high she could borrow enough to redo everything she wanted and still have decent mortgage payments. And then she'd gotten the cherry on top of the cake. Ansel had moved in with her. Ansel studied the carpet in Thane's hallway that led to the baths and bedrooms. Jared's right. All of that plush is going to need to be replaced. But no one wants you to be house poor. Thane clinked his beer bottle against Ansel's in a salute. I need enough fun money to go out with you every Thursday while Jazzy and Olivia do their sister supper thing. Ansel glanced at Jazzy, a smirk on his lips. Our girls need to bond once a week to be able to put up with us. You're lucky it's only once a week, Jazzy shot back. She was just blowing smoke, and he knew it. She didn't think she'd ever get tired of her Viking. Jared stood and patted the top of her head. He was almost as tall as Ansel, but bulkier. You don't appreciate the fact that you're looking at three prime male specimens, all over six feet, all decent looking, and all holding down good jobs. I hope you girls genuflect and say thank you prayers every night of the week. She snorted. Half of what her cousin said was only to bait people. I'll be sure to mention that to your Franny. Maybe she'll want to light incense and build a shrine. Franny was pregnant with Jared's third child and was hot and miserable. Worshipping him might not be high on her list of things to do. Jared threw back his head and laughed. Maybe not right now. She'd be tempted to throw something at my head. He started to the door. Let's hit the roof again. I want to reach the peak sometime today. She drained the last of her beer. The guys had already finished theirs. The minute they stepped outside, the heat and humidity hit them. They went straight to the ladders. Time to sweat again. Jazzy glanced at the street and noticed a man, gray-haired with stooping shoulders, who'd been walking a chocolate Labrador, standing there watching them. He wore a blue button-down long-sleeved shirt and tan slacks. A brimmed cap perched on his head. A neighbor? she asked. Ansel and Jared followed her gaze. The old guy didn't look like he meant to move any time soon. Ansel and Thane had plenty to say around friends, but tended to be quiet around people they didn't know. So they both shrugged and started to the roof. Better see what he wants, Jared told her. Really? It wasn't her house. But the man was probably just curious. Jazzy walked toward him. Hello? Can I help you with something? When she got close enough, he said, I'm Leo. I live in the third house across the street, the dark blue ranch with the deep front porch. This is my dog, Coco. She gave a brief smile. She'd like to hurry this along. I'm Jazzy. My sister and her boyfriend just bought this house. My friends and I came to help them renovate it. Leo nodded. He was her height, 5'8", and thin. I always liked the deep red clabberds and the limestone at the double entry doors. You're not going to change those, are you? They're not in the plans. Good. The house needs some work, I understand that. It's in good shape, just dated like ours. That's what happens when you get old. Jazzy gave another smile and turned to walk away. We have plenty to do, but it was nice to meet you. Leo didn't budge. She hesitated. Is there something you wanted to ask? No, I'm not nosy, you know. Some people accuse me of that, but I just like to keep an eye on things in the neighborhood. I take Coco for a walk every morning and late every afternoon. Dogs need exercise. She was running out of things to say to him and wanted to get back to work, but he looked sort of lonely and disoriented. She didn't want to brush him off. How long have you lived here? Fifty-some years. The school wasn't private back then. Our daughter went there, and I played golf every weekend. When she was on the roof, she'd seen the golf course. It started behind...